Good morning. I'm Reverend Kathleen Haynes, and it is a joy to have all of you join us today. I serve the churches of Mount Olive and Relief United Methodist Church, and I invite you into this time of worship together. Our scripture reading begins this morning with Luke chapter 4, verses 14 through 21. Hear these words. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in the synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me, to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Have you ever gone to a conference or some type of convention and they've got all these different speakers listed? You usually get some kind of booklet and it uh, describes what the different people are going to be talking about. Well, almost always there is one person that's the featured speaker, the keynote address, right? They give the keynote address. Um, And in other words, they're the ones who are sharing what everybody has gathered to hear. They are the ones with the information. They are the ones that... Um, that folks want to hear from. Well, I don't know about you, I'm not going to be attending a conference anytime in the next few weeks because COVID rates are sky high again. Uh, Fortunately, they're dropping, but they're still pretty high. That's why we can't meet in person in church. But uh, I still, I want some good news. You know, anybody else, (laughs) especially this time of year. I'm looking for good news. And in this sermon today from the lectionary reading, we get the good news. And the good news is the gospel, that Jesus is here. And um, it begins as very much as a continuation of the epiphany stories that we've been hearing in terms of these are the revelations at the beginning of Jesus's ministry that confirm to us and help us see that Jesus is indeed God's son and that we should listen to him. So let's recap just briefly. Um, with the beginning of the Christian year, which is Advent, at the very beginning, we heard Mary's Magnificat, right? And um, the Magnificat is very much a story of the overturning of power and the lifting up of those who are oppressed and are poor. And this is the message from the beginning. Now, it's long and it's flowery, but it's beautiful and it's powerful. We get continued confirmation with Elizabeth and then the angels at Jesus' birth. And then by Anna and Simeon in the temple, we hear of Jesus going to the uh, temple himself as a child and already impressing the people with his knowledge and his wisdom with the questions that he asks. Then we just last week talked about Jesus's baptism. And now we're already to Jesus's first sermon. Now, the part that we skipped over was Jesus going out into the wilderness and the temptation story. So we're going to obviously look at that during Lent, which is when we normally do. But it's an important thing, I think, to keep in mind that that's where we are in the scripture right now. Jesus has gotten confirmation from God through this baptism, and the people around them heard that. So the Holy Spirit is there. Uh, some folks think that the Holy Spirit doesn't come in until um, Acts in the, in the New Testament. But no, Holy Spirit's been there with Jesus this whole time and all the way through the Old Testament too. But we have here the Holy Spirit with God, with Jesus, throughout the temptations. And then where we pick up today is Jesus coming back in, coming in and preaching in Galilee. And he is spreading the word around this area. And people are amazed. They love it, right? And then he decides to go to his hometown. (laughs) Now, we're going to talk about that part of it, the fact that he's at his hometown and the people and um, how they respond. We're going to talk about that next week. But for today, we're going to focus on some good news. All right. 
and that is the scripture that he reads. So he comes into the synagogue, says, as he normally does, and he is given the, uh, the scroll for the prophet Isaiah. It's obviously an important text for the Hebrew people. And he turns to it. Now, we're not entirely sure if, much like us today, if there was already a preset um, group of readings for that particular Sunday, or excuse me, that particular Sabbath, um, much like we have. Uh, we don't always have to follow it. Sometimes I'll, I'll leave the lectionary. That's what we call it. Sometimes I'll leave the lectionary and... Um, and preach like a sermon series or, you know, God will lay something on my heart and we'll, we'll look at that particular scripture for that Sunday. But most of the time, in order to get a full view of the whole gospel, uh, we have a set of readings that we go through over the course of the Christian year. We know that at some point that develops in the Hebrew faith, in the Jewish faith. We don't know if at, that, if at this point in which Jesus is reading, if he specifically had been assigned that text or if um, it was one that he specifically scrolled to. Like if he said, hey, give me Isaiah, you know. <laughs> uh, I think either way, you can see the power of it. Um, a lot of times I will be amazed when I use a lectionary, when I use the preset readings, with just how relevant they end up being for that particular week. Um, I wonder if it's one of those things that sometimes it's like you get chill bumps when you read something and you're like, whoa, <laughs> because this is indeed the perfect text for Jesus and his message to get across. This is also the text you might, when uh, you heard the scripture reading, you might also notice that it is hopefully very familiar to you as a United Methodist, because this is a part of our communion uh, that we liturgy that we use every time we do communion that Jesus has appointed and that Jesus has been anointed to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty. And see, it actually says in the scripture, it says to let the oppressed go free. But I'm so used to saying it as we do in the communion that I say to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Um, if I'm going strictly by the scripture here, uh, by this particular translation, it says to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim the, the year of the Lord's favor. So that is the portion that he reads. It's not long, right? Usually they would only read, at least each person would only read around three verses each. Um, I know some of my lay readers would probably prefer that than rather than when I give them like 20 verses to read. <laughs> but uh, they always do a great job, though. But uh, so he read these short verses. And I will note that he left off. He stopped before Isaiah 61, 2 says, and the day of the vengeance of our God. Oh, Jesus cuts it off. Jesus doesn't read that. That's not part of the good news for him. So, the good news is, as Gail O'Day says, Jesus released, Gail O'Day says, who uh, was a um, theologian and scholar, that Jesus released persons from various forms of bondage and oppression. Economic, so the poor, Physical, the lame and the crippled. Political, the condemnation. In other words, um, it, it gave uh, freedom to people to be able to speak and to say what they wanted to say. And demonic, in other words, over spiritual forces. So you could not be held down by anything that was not of God. So Jesus brought all of these things forward. Dr. O'Day also says that forgiveness of sin, therefore, can be seen as a form of release from bondage to iniquity. In other words, we are freed of our sins through Jesus Christ. And then, after he finishes reading the scripture, he says, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Now, hopefully this is a reference that most of you will get. It seems to be pretty ubiquitous in our culture now, but... Basically, he then sits down, and it's like, mic drop. <laughs> uh, in other words, what else can you say? Jesus is saying, I am the fulfillment of these things. You have heard the proclamation of these things from me. And then we end the scripture. Powerful, right? Think about that for a minute. This Old Testament, this 
ancient text for all of them, not just for us. It was an old text for Jesus' people back in that time and the people sitting there in the synagogue. It's been the Old Testament for a really long time, <laughs> the Hebrew Testament for a long time. These words are being fulfilled in your hearing today. This is the good news of Jesus Christ, that we are set free, that we don't have to be slaves to anything. We don't have to be slaves to our economic situation. We don't have to be slaves to the political situation. We don't have to be slaves to our, our emotional situation or our spiritual situation. That in all things, Jesus can free us. Now, it's not necessarily going to be the type of freedom that people first thought it was going to be or that it maybe sounds like on first hearing. It's not necessarily going to be um, if you are a prisoner in jail. Um, it's not necessarily going to be that you're going to get to bust out. <laughs> um, what it means is if you find yourself trapped in a place in which your heart is locked down, um, where your soul is troubled or your life is, is just not as you want it, that Jesus gives us the freedom from slavery to sin and death. Jesus frees us from sin, frees us from the fear of death, and allows us to become new creations in him. Well, that sounds easy, Pastor, when you say it that way, but, well, it's not necessarily easy, but in Christ it is possible. All things are possible through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, and he's always working for our good. So, when you look at situations like, and here, I'm not getting political, okay, because heaven forbid, <laughs> but if you find yourself trapped in a place where the political climate around you is causing you to hurt, it makes your blood pressure go up, it makes you angry, it makes you want to curse people, it makes you want to curse the system or or just wish harm upon people, even if you're not going to do anything about it. But if you find yourself feeling that way, you need freedom from that type of oppression, okay? And what Jesus can do for you is you begin to turn your concerns over to Jesus, and Jesus will allow you to begin to see things in a different light or give you opportunities to make some changes, either in yourself or in the situation around you. If you are frustrated, Jesus will begin to show you how to open doors to places of less frustration, to places of, of, of movement and of growth. Now, it takes work on our part, but that's what any relationship requires, right? You can't just, Jesus is not a genie. <laughs> you, you can't just go and rub the Bible and say, hey, you know, fix this. I, I want it this way. Jesus is one who is bringing through us about the kingdom of God. And in doing that, we get to encounter God through Jesus' teachings, through the knowledge that, that we are free from these things if only we turn them over to the Lord, right? Economic stuff, you know, money stuff, that can be so hard. <laughs> uh, I know this from a personal uh, perspective. Um, I know it from church perspective. Uh, one of my churches, we, um, at one point, we were very, very concerned about whether or not we could legitimately, legally, or uh, literally, I'm looking for that word, if we could literally keep the lights on. And that's a hard place to be. Um, when you have to start making difficult choices because finances are limited, that's a hard place to be. Now, again, we can't just rub the Bible and pray and say, God, give me freedom from these financial problems and expect to wake up to a pile of cash. Would that we were. The Bible would be the most sought after book in history. But, um, but what can happen is God does allow us to open our eyes to things that we can do to help change the situation. Um, God often brings people into our lives that help make things better, uh, particularly if that's something we're praying for. 
um, whether it be a really good boss that helps with the situation or someone who is a teacher or a mentor that allows you to learn new skills. Um, sometimes it's someone who's just generous and gives you a gift that you weren't expecting and it helps you meet, make ends meet. Some teach us to fish and some give us a fish, you know, and God uses all of these things. The most important thing to remember is that whatever your financial situation, it doesn't make you a bad person. What it means is that you live in a world in which we place value on things more than people sometimes, a lot of the time. And so we have to make sure that we understand our own value and then work in whatever ways we, we can. And when I say work, I don't necessarily mean go out and physically work because there are some people who live in poverty because they can't physically go out and work. Um, but what I mean is that we do the, the work with God to look at ways to improve our situation, to find God's blessings, not necessarily monetary, but find the way in which God is working in our lives and embrace these things and find our comfort in these things. And, you know, it's, I can tell you it is possible to come through. <laughs> um, but I also can tell you that it is difficult. And um, some of the financial burdens I've experienced in my life have been some of the heaviest burdens of everything. But again, I found my liberty and my freedom through Christ in these things. Long before I actually found what I felt like was financial security. All right. When it comes to um, some of these other forms of, of imprisonment or jail or oppression, um, sometimes they are found in forms of addiction, of issues with mental health, um, a lot of times these are things that are beyond our individual capabilities. Um, and sometimes even beyond our individual capabilities with Christ. In other words, God is working in us and we are working. But God is going to bring other people in because God knows that we still need some extra help and support. So what I want to encourage you to do is if you are struggling in any way, shape, or form with any type of addiction or um, any type, and it can, it can be addiction to things like anger, um, shopping, <laughs> it can be addiction to drugs or alcohol, um, it can be addiction to gambling, uh, that's something that I'm very concerned about in our state, ever since they have started putting all these gambling commercials on television, it just seems like, uh, let's just roll in this temptation even more. Um, so I'm concerned that that's going to be an ever-growing problem for a lot of people. But whatever thing that you find yourself in, whatever type of addiction, if it's a mental health issue, um, again, that very often is something that requires outside assistance, either a counselor or um, a doctor that can prescribe medications that your body may need. Or it may be talking to your pastor. Uh, it might be that this is a temporary thing. Um, uh, a, a depression that that is there for a multiple uh, multiple reasons and uh, multiple factors that are happening in your life right now, and just talking to someone else will help you go through that time and come out of it. But whatever it is, know that God through Christ is going to work to help you in all of these things and freeing you from these things because that's the good news of Jesus Christ. He came to set us free. He came to free us for joyful obedience, is how we continue on in our communion liturgy. And that joyful obedience comes from a heart that is so grateful for all that God has done for us. So that is the crux of the message. That is the keynote for Jesus' entire ministry throughout the book of Luke and throughout uh, Acts, because that's the continuation of the book of Luke. Jesus frees us. Jesus is the fulfillment, and Jesus is the light. So let us celebrate and hang on to that good news. Until I'm with you again, may peace be with you, and thanks be to God.
Amen.